Hello everybody, welcome to the class. Uh, class is a statistical method. Uh, the first thing we want to know is uh, why you want to take this class. Uh, some of you may say this is a required course for your degree. Well, uh, your degree is, your program is, uh, uh, is perfect. Uh, somebody may say this is a technical elective, then you are smart. Uh, in my opinion, Statistics is very important. Uh, every student, uh, everyone, supposed to learn something about statistics. Uh, the reason is uh, obvious. Uh, so, for example, uh, you may want to buy uh, a car uh, with an uh, auto driving function. So, you know what happened in the auto driving car. Everything is controlled by artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence actually is based on statistics. Right? So that is the first thing. The second example is uh, you may want to invest. Right? You want to uh, buy or sell uh, stocks in the market. So, um, things changed a lot in most recent years. Right? Uh, you may know that more than 80% or maybe 90% of the transactions traded on the market today is uh, performed by machines. Right? So when you go to the market, you are not compete with human beings, you are compete with uh, machines. So how machine can trade stocks? Well, they based on algorithms based on statistic method. So uh, statistics is very important. Everybody should learn something about statistics. Uh, in this class, we are going to discuss uh, several topics. Uh, uh, basically, there are the first seven chapters of the textbook. So the first chapter is uh, looking at the data from the point of view of distributions. And the second is looking at the data from the relationship. And the next one is producing data and the chapter four is uh, probability. And the following uh, is uh, sampling distribution, introduction to inference, and the last one, if we have time, we may discuss inference for distributions. Uh, we discussed some, uh, 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 briefly, uh, uh, the major topics in each chapter. The first one, looking at the data from distributions. In this chapter, we examine only one set of data. For example, right, you, the midterm scores of the class, or uh, the stock price within a summer period. Uh, anyway, we have only one set of data. And uh, we may display this data with graphs. Right? We have a bar chart, we have a point chart. Right? Or we may describe this uh, set of data with some numbers. For example, what is the mean? score of the class. What is the mean uh, stock price within the last one month? And also, we want to know the standard deviation. If the standard deviation is large, that means the variance is large. For example, the score, the highest score can be 100, the lowest score can be 50, 40, or something. If the standard deviation is small, then almost everybody uh, obtained almost uh, the same score, for example, around 85 or something like that. So this is the standard deviation. The next concept that we have discussed in this chapter is a density curve. Uh, density curve uh, is a, a two-dimensional plot. Uh, it is the density or the frequency uh, for, each, for each data. Uh, and uh, the next one is one of the most uh, concept in this class. It's called normal distribution. Uh, we are going to have a lot of calculations uh, based on normal distribution. The second chapter is uh, looking at the data from the point of view of relationships. Uh, in this chapter, we are going to discuss two sets of data. Uh, for example, uh, one set of data is uh, the time you spend in this class each week. Uh, for example, somebody spent three hours, somebody spent eight hours. Uh, the second data may be the score that you get uh, for the course. For example, you get 95, somebody else gets uh, 85. Uh, 
And we want to know if there's any relationship between the scores and the starting time. Mm? You may uh, claim that the longer you study, uh, the, the higher the score you get. Uh, this may be true, maybe not true. So that is, uh, is going to be investigated in this uh, uh, chapter. Eh? And uh, uh, first one, we can plot this, eh? it's not from, uh, you know, uh, we can plot this, uh, the plot for these two sets of data uh, usually is called a scatter plot. And also, we can find the relationship be directly between these two sets of data, and that is a concept that's correlation coefficient. Mm. For example, uh, if these two sets of data are very closely related, uh, that correlation coefficient can be equal to one. Right? If their correlation coefficient is uh, uh, correlation is very strong, but uh, is opposite direction, uh, one is up, another one is down, then this one correlation coefficient can be equals negative one. Uh, if there's no relationship, for example, right, the the, uh, the sealed uh, quantity of ice creams uh, with respect to the crime rate in the in the city, uh, you may say there's no relationship between these two sets of data. Then the correlation coefficient may be equal to zero or very close to zero. Uh, sometimes we want to find out to predict when the one set of data from the other set of data. Uh, for example, if you study uh, five hours, you want to know what kind of score you can get in this class. Uh, so the study hours is represented by x, the score you can get is uh, represented by y. You want to know how to predict y from x. Uh, in this example, we are going to discuss uh, the uh, regression. Uh, um, uh, specifically, it's called the least square regression. And that's the only regression we are going to discuss in this class. Uh, the next topic in this chapter will be two-way table. Eh? We are going to discuss some details uh, uh, later time. The chapter three is the producing data. Eh? I know some of you from health uh, major, some of you from uh, uh, construction, and you may want to get some conclusions from the experiment, uh, from the experiment. So you need to know how to design an ideal experiment. And also definitely some ethics you need to follow. And this will be in the chapter three. Chapter four is the probability. You may already know some probability from your high school, and we are going to discuss a little bit more. Uh, the first concept in this chapter is randomness. And the randomness is the foundation for the statistics. If you want to get a reliable conclusion, your experiment must be random. Uh, the next one, we are going to discuss uh, some probability models. Uh, we are going to discuss some rules, for example, additional rule, uh, addition rule, and the multiplication rule. Uh, addition rule, uh, for example, uh, if we have a box uh, filled with some uh, uh, balls of different colors. Right? The probability you uh, pick a red ball uh, is, uh, for example, ten percent. The probability you pick a blue ball is twenty uh, percent. Uh, so, what is the probability you pick uh, either a red or blue ball? Right? In this case, we use the addition rule. The next rule is the multiplication. A multiplication rule uh, deals with event that has uh, several steps. Uh, for example, a couple want to have uh, three babies. Right? Uh, we assume the baby uh, to be a girl or boy, each one um, has a 50% probability. So what's the probability that the uh, couple have uh, uh, three boys? Right? So in this case, the event is uh, can be decomposed into three steps. The first kid, the second kid, and the last one. Right? And each one is uh, dependent or independent. So in this example, we may use a multiplication rule to find the uh, final probability. Uh, another topic we are going to discuss is uh, uh, we are going to investigate the means and the variance of a random variable. Uh, next chapter, chapter five, is sampling distributions. Uh, in statistics, the conclusion we want 
should be applied to the population. That means a big, um, uh, a big uh, population. But uh, when we design the experiment, it is a sample. Right? So how can a conclusion obtained from a sample uh, apply to a population? Uh, that is the key. Right? So we need to know the sampling design in this chapter and also the sampling distribution of the sample mean. We discussed several little topics. The first one is normally distributed population, and the next one is the central limit theorem, and the last one is the Weibo distribution. Uh, the, we also we are going to discuss uh, the sample dis sampling distribution for cons and proportions. Uh, in this part, we are going to discuss binomial discuss binomial distribution, right? uh, which is the second distribution we are going to discuss. The first one is normal distribution, the second one is binomial distribution. Chapter 6 deals with the introduction to inference. Um, we already know statistic, uh, the key for statistic is uh, try to find the conclusion to the population uh, from the data from the sample, and this process is called the inference. Right? So how to uh, make a conclusion to the population from the data from the sample. Uh, the first one is estimating uh, the quantity, for example, the mean, uh, with some confidence. So you can see, for example, uh, if I uh, calculate the mean of this class, suppose equals 3.5 GPA, and I want to conclude that the UFM GPA is also 3.5 or something else. So how confident can I make that claim? 95% or 80%. Uh, so this is estimating with confidence. Uh, the next topic uh, is also very important is uh, the test of significance. For example, uh, in the labs, you claim that you find some uh, drugs that can treat cancer. Right? That definitely is very uh, important. So you design some experiment and you get some result and you uh, have some conclusion. So how significant is your result? Um, this is will be discussed also in this chapter. We are going to discuss uh, uh, hypothesis and uh, an important uh, concept is called p-value. Uh, if your p-value uh, is too small, that means this event is significant. If your p-value is too big, then this event is not that significant. Uh, the next chapter is, uh, maybe the last chapter, is uh, uh, inference for distributions. Um, we are going to uh, investigate the conclusion uh, for the mean of a population. Uh, in this part, we are going to discuss a t-test. Uh, uh, and also we are going to compare two means uh, to check if these two means are from different population. Uh, for example, uh, this class, we, are, uh, we know the mean of this class equals uh, uh, 3.5. And the adjacent class, uh, their mean is 2.5. So we want to know if these two classes are from the same university. Right? One mean of the, the mean of one sample is 3.5, the mean of another sample is 2.5. Are these two classes are from the same university, from USM, or they are from the, maybe totally different universities? Right? Um, uh, in this part, portion, uh, section, we are going to discuss two samples um, and we are going to use the, st uh, the concept of Z uh, statistic. Uh, this uh, briefly uh, will be the uh, topics we are going to discuss in this class. Okay? Uh, so that's all for the, for the overview. Okay, next one, uh, we will continue chapter one. And uh, chapter one is, uh, we said, looking at the data from distributions. And uh, in this lecture, we are going to look at the data from the graph. Right? Uh, uh, the topics in this chapter, right? uh, we have uh, three major topics. The first one is discipline distribution with graphs. Um, we are going to discuss uh, variables, type of variables, and graphs for categorical variables, bar graph, pine chart, 
and the graphs for quantitative variables, histogram, stem plot, uh, stem plot uh, versus histogram, and uh, interpreting histogram and time plot. And the second part is uh, describing distribution with numbers. Uh, we are going to discuss the measures of a center, uh, including the mean and the median. Uh, and we are going to discuss uh, how to calculate each and what's the difference between each one. Uh, the measures of a spread, uh, including the quanti uh, quantiles and the standard deviation uh, of these two. Uh, and we are going to investigate uh, five number summary, how to get, uh, if you are given a data, a set of data, how to find the five number summary. Uh, and uh, how to plot this five number uh, summary with a box plot. And we're choosing a more summary statistics, changing the unit of a measurement, that means it's called the linear transformation. Uh, the last topic is uh, density curves and the normal distribution. Uh, we discussed density curves, measuring center and spread for density curves. Uh, the most important is normal distribution. Uh, and there's a rule called 68.95 and 99.7. Right? Uh, more general, we are going to standardizing the observations and the using the standard normal table, which is table A at the back of the textbook, uh, to calculate the probabilities or proportions. Um, right? And the last topic is the inverse um, normal calculations. If we know the probability or the proportions, and we want to find out the, uh, the required x value. Right, the first concept is the statistics. Right? The statistic is the science of learning from data. Right? We know the traditional society uh, deals with a lot of data. It's called big data. Right? You go online, right? you use your smartphone, and a lot of companies collect your data. Right? Amazon, Google, Facebook. Um, they may do something good, they may do something bad. Right? There's an argument um, among this, but anyway. Uh, statistics, as we said, is very important. Right? We need to learn statistics. Uh, cases, the objects described by the set of data. Right? It can be an individual, uh, can be a company, can be animals, can be a plant, uh, can be any uh, object of your interest. Right? A variable is a characteristic of a case. Um, uh, we can classify variables into two quantities, uh, two uh, types. The first one is called uh, categorical, uh, something that falls into one of the several categories. Uh, example is uh, blood type, type A, type B, and uh, so on. Uh, or the hair color, black, um, white, and blue, or no blue, okay? so yellow. Uh, and the first language, uh, English, France, uh, French, uh, the second type of variable is called a quantitative, that's something that can take numerical values for which arithmetic operations uh, can be uh, applied. For example, adding together, right? uh, calculate the average, uh, multiply, multiply, uh, division, and for example, the age, right? uh, the height, and the blood pressure. Uh, all these are deal with the arithmetic numbers. Uh, can be applied with uh, can be applied uh, uh, arithmetic operation, and uh, we choose appropriate variables that mirrors what you want to, right? and for example the rate of occurrence or the account the account of occurrence. And there's a little bit difference between these two. The next one is the label. The label is a special variable used in some data sets to distinguish the different cases. Uh, the next is the distribution, uh, which is a variable. Uh, this tells us what values the variable takes and how often it takes these values. For example, uh, the set of data uh, comes from the midterm uh, score. Right? So, for example, most of you get um, 90. So, 90, for example, we have a 10 90s. We have uh, several. Uh, uh, 80s, we have several 100, and if we plot this, this gives us a distribution. Right. How to display this distribution? 
Uh, the first method is with graphs. The second method is with numbers. Uh, the first one we discuss uh, with graphs. Uh, basically, we have several graphs, um, bar graph and pie chart. Uh, bar graph, each category is represented by a bar. Pie chart is uh, represented by a pie. Uh, pie, the slice, must represent the parts of one whole. Uh, we have some others, stem plot, histogram, and uh, time plot. In the stem plot, it's also called stem and leaf plot. Each observation is represented by a stem and a leaf. Uh, the leaf is the last digit of the number. All other digits are called stem. And the histogram uh, breaks the range of values of a variable into classes as display only the count or the percent of the observations that uh, uh, falls into each class. Uh, time plot uh, plot each observation against the time at which it was married. Here we have an uh, example. Uh, the pine graph and the pine chart. The pine graph each category is represented by a bar. Right? In this example, we have the GPS market data, right? and we have several uh, brands, and each brand uh, is represented with a name here on the horizontal, and the market share, which is in percentage, is represented by in vertical market shares. For example, the first one is about 47%, and we draw all this uh, in this example, we have a one, two, three, four, five, five um, categories, and uh, uh, each category there's a there's gap here. Right? This gap can be large, can be small. That's not important. And uh, all this uh, the value is represented by the vertical, the height of the uh, vertical height. And the second is a pie chart. The pie chart is represented, the first one, the whole must be equal to 1. Okay? So all these part, this portions must add up to 1. So in this example, uh, we plot this one, Tom Tom is 19% represented by this part, and we have uh, others, five categories, and each one is represented by 47%, 10, 7, or 17%. And keep in mind, all this uh, uh, percentage must be added up to 1. And this one, in here, definitely this file add up to also equal to one, but not necessary. For example, we can use the absolute value. For example, uh, maybe million uh, quantities. Okay, well, suppose this one is uh, uh, 17 million, this one equals uh, uh, 8 million or something. So all this uh, uh, quantity of unit is so not necessary add up to equal to one. But uh, in this example, they use percentage, so also uh, add up equal to one. But as we said, this is not necessary. Right? But this one must be equal to one. Uh, next is uh, stem plot. Uh, suppose we are given a set of data here, and the leaf is the last digit. For example, in this data 16, the leaf is six, six, one is the stem. If the number is, uh, is long, for example, uh, 216, then 21 will be the, will be the stem. Uh, so how, if we are given a set of data, how to draw the stem plot? We use this example to show how to do this. Uh, the first one, we need to this, uh, determine the leaves and the steps, uh, then, we write the steps in vertical column uh, with the smallest at the top and draw a vertical line uh, at uh, the right. Uh, this example, six the leaves, leaves uh, include six, three, eight, 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 two, three, six, all this, and the steps are one, two, four, two, something here. So we can see the first one we need to investigate the steps. The steps, the smallest is one, then we have a two, uh, here and we have three, we have four, uh, three, two here. We have uh, we don't have uh, do we have five. Uh, we looks like uh, uh, we don't have five. Uh, yeah, we have five. Okay, 
uh, we don't have six. So the maximum step is five, the smallest is one, and we have all uh, in between. So step one is we draw one, we write one, two, three, four, five, uh, vertically, then we draw a vertical line up to the right. So that is the step one. Step two, we need to do this for each data. Okay? Uh, the first one is 16, and the stem is 1, so we have 1 here, and we write the leaf, 6, so 1, 6. The second one is uh, 43, so 43, 4 is the stem is here, 3, then we write 3 only, which is the leaf here. Then the next one is 38, so 3, stem, 8 is the leaf through here, and uh, uh, 48 is a 4, then the second one, we already have 3 from uh, here, and the next one is 8. So we proceed like this for all the data, to so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we have 20 data, then we draw all the leaves to the right of the vertical line. Okay? So that is the step 2. Step 3 is we need to sort all the leaves in an increasing order. And we copy this one, two, three, four, five steps and the vertical line, and we sort the right hand side. So six, there's only one, so six. And this one is a three, five, eight, six. We sort this one in increasing order. So three is the smallest, five is next, then six is next, and eight is the largest. So we write three, five, eight, six. Same thing applied to here. Uh, eight, six, the smallest is three, the next one is a four. Right? And we have two files, so three, four, two files. Uh, we need to repeat three, two files, we need to write two files. The next one is six, seven, and eight, six, seven, and eight. And same thing here, zero, one, two, two, three, three, eight, and the last one is one. Uh, so this is the complete stem plot. Uh, the requirement in this class is if you are given a set of data, you need to be able to draw this stem plot. The second one is, uh, if you are given this stem plot, you should be able to uh, uh, investigate uh, the numbers. For example, what is, if we are given this, what is the largest number in the data set? Eh? The largest number here is not uh, eight or something here. The largest number is uh, the last one, is 51. Eh? It's not one, it's not five, it is 51. That is the last number. The, uh, that is the maximum number. The smallest or the minimum number is uh, uh, 1, 6, which is uh, 16. Uh, how many numbers do we have here? How many data? What's the data size? Uh, you count uh, 16, 23, 25, 26. Actually, we only need to count uh, how many leaves we have here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we have a totally 20 numbers. So the size for the data set is 20. Uh, so everything here uh, about the data is, uh, can, be, um, can be plotted in this uh, stem plot. Next slide, we discuss some variations of a stem plot. In this one, we discussed only one set of data. Right. And here, we may want to represent a two sets of data with uh, the same stem plot. Right. For example, we have some numbers for uh, girls' um, variable, and uh, we have some other numbers for boys. Right. Um, so what we do here is uh, the stems are plotted in the middle, right. and we draw a vertical line to the left, right. then we draw the leaves. Uh, for the girls group, and uh, the smallest is 16, the next one is uh, 23, 25, 26, 28, and the largest is 51. Right? So those data are for the girls group. And uh, the boys data are plotted also in this uh, plot, but it's on the right hand side. Right? Uh, for the boys group, we have a uh, the smallest is 0, 8, so 0, 8, the next one is 12, the next one is 18, and the largest looks like is uh, it's not 50, not 40, it must be 37, so this is the largest. Right? 
uh, make sure we understand uh, how to interpret the, the stem plot. The largest here is 37, not 50, 0. Right? And the largest to the left for the girls' group is 51. Uh, these steps must be uh, extracted from both groups. Right? So it looks like if we only draw the girls' group, then we don't need to draw this zero because we don't have any data um, with zero something. Right? If we want to draw the stem plot for only the girls, we start from here, we uh, end up to this point. If we draw the stem plot for the boys, we are going to use this, we are going to use this, 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 and we are going to stop at three because the maximum number is 37. But if we draw these two groups, uh, two sets of data together, the steps must be from zero all the way to five. So we combine together. So this is called back-to-back um, -back stem plot. Huh? The next variation is called stem plot with the split steps. And uh, look at this one here. And this one is very long, right? Or uh, maybe, for example, if this one is even longer, so this, this is possible. So in that case, it's not convenient to draw this plot on a piece of paper. Uh, so what we are going to do is we are going to break, uh, break this, uh, this, these groups here. And this one looks also very long, and we want to uh, break this too. Uh, so what we do is here, we copy 0, 8 here, and 1, and 1 here. And uh, okay, this two looks like we also want to break, right? So why? Uh, how do you break these uh, uh, groups? If we want to break these leaves into two groups, we may want to, the group one is from zero to four, and uh, the next one is from five to nine. So zero, one, two, three, four, and the next one is uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If you want to break into three groups, four groups, then you can decide. Uh, how to segment this. Right? Uh, in this example, we break this uh, into two groups. Right? So the first one here, uh, and uh, less than five or larger than five. So one is one and one. Uh, on the left hand side, this is uh, six. So the first one, no, nothing here. So we just leave this blank. And this two is, uh, is here, and the eight, belongs to the second, right? and six also belongs to the second. So we break this one into two. Yeah. And the two also, we break this two into two, twos yeah? uh, on the left, and we have three, which is the only one on here, and we have five, six, eight, five, six, eight. And for this part, uh, we're going to one, three, four, 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 which is less than five, this will be here, and the seven, seven, eight, 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 nine, nine will be here, which is all these are uh, greater than four, it's greater or equal to five, so here. And the same thing applies to three, break from uh, here, uh, 37, uh, three, four, and uh, five, five, six, seven, eight, and this one is one, one, two, three, and the last one is seven. And uh, in this four, it also breaks, uh, so the first group is zero, one, two, two, three, three, uh, and the next one is eight, and we don't have anything on the right hand side, so we just, uh, you can know this part. So those are stem plot uh, with uh, split stems. Uh, we can see stem plot is uh, very simple, right? but uh, it's very straightforward. But it looks like it is very good for only small data set. Right? In this example, we have a, uh, <coughs> this part we have a 20. This part we have a 20, this one maybe also 20. Right? So we can still use a stem plot. Sometimes it's not convenient, we can break it uh, with a split stem. How about if the data set is even larger? Yeah? For example, if we have 20,000 data, this side, 20,000 that side, can we still use a stem plot? Right? We can use it, but it's not convenient at all. So in that example, uh, if the data set is large, then we are going to use a new concept is called uh, histogram. Histogram is good for large data set. Right? The idea is uh, we break the range of values into classes or bucket. Right? And we show the number of individual data points that falls in each interval. Right? Um, 
it's better we use this example to show how to do this. For example, uh, this data set is uh, uh, given for the IQ test scores for 60 randomly chosen fifth grade student. Mm -hmm. uh, the first the student IQ was 145, second one is 139, next one is 126, and so on. So until the last, the, the, the last one is 101. As we said, we do not want to use a stem plot to represent uh, this because it's not convenient. Instead, we are going to use a, a histogram. Uh, step one is we want to break this one into classes. Yeah? We need to examine the smallest, the minimum number and the maximum number. The minimum number looks like uh, is, uh, there's 82 here, there's 81 here. So, okay, the minimum is 81. Yeah? And the maximum number is uh, 145 here. And uh, there are any others? 145. So we have. Okay, looks like 145 is the maximum. So we know the range of this data set is from about 80 to about 145, 150. Uh, now it's your decision uh, to decide how to de break this into categories. In this example, we use some, uh, uh, the size of each class is, is 10. So the first class is from 75 to 84. Uh, the next one is from 85 to 80, uh, 94, the next 94 to 104, and so on. The last one is from 145 to 154. Uh, so that is the step one. We break the range of values into classes. In this example, 10 classes. Uh, you can break this into 12, into 20, into uh, no matter what you uh, see fit. But this example, we have it. No, oh, sorry, not 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, we have 8. Eh? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, that's the step 1. Then step 2, we need to count the number of data that falls in each category. For example, how many data are in this class, 75 to 84? Eh? We need to examine each one. Eh? So we find that there, is only, that there are only 2. One is 81, and there's another one is... Uh, 82. So we have only two in this basket. Uh, when you do this, you may want to use the uh, use method to, to count this. Right? Uh, so for example, this one is uh, here, and this one, 139, will be here, and this one, 126, will be here, and you do this for all the data, then you count how many is in each uh, classes. Uh, anyway, the result is in the first class we have two, the second class from 85 to 94, uh, we have three. And the next one from 95 to 104, we have 10, and next we have 16, 13, 10. Uh, the last two we have five and one. Right? Then now it's time to uh, draw the histogram. On the horizontal, we draw the uh, classes uh, without any gap. Uh, so this compared to the to the uh, to this uh, bar chart, which we may have gap in between this bar because this horizontal width does not represent anything. Right? So you can make this one large, make it smaller. That then uh, doesn't matter. But for this one here, it matters. Right? So we need to draw the first one from uh, 75 to 84. And you, we, don't, we cannot have uh, gaps uh, in between each class. So the next one is from 85 to 94, 95 to uh, 104. In this example, we, all the data are given are integers. Right? Uh, so this plot the classes. And the vertical in class 1, the number is 2. So we draw 2. So this is 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is 2. The next class. Uh, the number or the frequency, the quantity is 3, so this is 3, the next one is 10 here, and this 16 here, and the next one is 13, 10, 5, and 1. Uh, so this gives us the uh, histogram.
Okay, so for this example, uh, as we said, a histogram is very good for large quantity, uh, large data set, and we should know the difference between a histogram and a, a bar chart. Right? Um, okay, anyway, all this method, right? graphs, right? the first one is this, right? except this one. This one is not uh, uh, very good. In, in the distribution sense. Okay, so we look at this one. Right? Bar chart, we can see this is large, this is small, okay, look like this. Here. And for this one here, uh, for this uh, stem plot, we may see the data looks like uh, uh, this. So we have more data uh, belonging to three and four. We have less number of data uh, belongs to one uh, and, uh, and five. In this case, uh, this, uh, in here, and for this back-to-back uh, -back stem plot, and here looks like this, and look like this, and for this uh, histogram, and maybe even better, so we can see uh, the data looks like in this shape. And what we are talking about here is called the distribution. The distribution, once we plotted all this data with different uh, graphs, we want to look for the overall pattern. Okay? And the um, overall pattern, uh, so in this kind, looks like here, look like this. And we are looking for the deviations from the pattern. So, example here, most of the data right, are in, in the center. Uh, we have some data uh, in this way. Uh, that means this guy is very smart, and this one maybe. Okay, uh, the, the, the score is small, eh? is, uh, so these are the most uh, in the middle part. Uh, and this is, and this, and this are called uh, deviations. Uh, so we look for the overall pattern and for striking deviations from the pattern, and we describe the overall pattern by the shape. In this example, the shape looks like a bell, uh, maybe uh, inverted bell, uh, and we are looking for center. Uh, the center of the distribution here looks like uh, in here. Uh, so this is the center. So the center is uh, around 110. Uh, and the next one is uh, the spread. The spread means uh, uh, represents the variance of the data. In this case, the spread is. Uh, uh, you can see from here to from here to here, or we may later time we we'll discuss um, some uh, use some uh, uh, quantities maybe from here to here or anyway. So you can see uh, the the spread. Uh, for this one here, for this uh, stem plot, see so the center is uh, around here, and the spread looks like uh, like this. The shape looks like also a bell shape, but it's uh, because the property of this um, stem plot it is uh, uh, to the right, not the top and the bottom. Right. Once given, we are given the distribution, we may look for some uh, outliers. Outliers is important. Uh, either the, the result is not correct, uh, for example, if you take some, uh, uh, take some data from an uh, um, experiment, that data may be, may be wrong. Uh, you, you either you record it wrong, or the machine, or the equipment is wrong at that time. But anyway, or maybe that is surprising discover. Right? Uh, so that may be good. So, but anyway, we need to uh, investigate outliers. So what is an uh, outlier? Outlier is an individual value that falls outside the overall pattern. For example, here uh, looks like we, the pattern distribution, the overall shape looks like this. Um, we may say there's no outlier. Uh, but if there's some, uh, like here, uh, so maybe Sheraton or something. Uh, so here, the IQ is extremely high, so 180, and we do not have any data in 160, 170. But this one is uh, far away from the overall pattern, and that is called outlier. Uh, in this example, <coughs> we miss uh, there's no outlier here. But how to determine if a data is an outlier? 
next um, section, we are going to discuss a formula to determine if a data is uh, an outlier or not. But in this case, to our eyes, it looks like no in this example. Uh, obviously, a large gap in the distribution is typically a sign of an uh, outlier. Um, once we find an uh, outlier in the data, we need to be able to explain the outliers, uh, either, as we said, errors or uh, equipment fa uh, failure, or maybe this is very good um, uh, discovery. The next one is the mood of the distribution. The mood is defined the major peaks. Here, in this example, looks like uh, this is called a mono mode or single mode because it looks like there's only one here. Right? This is maximum. Uh, if, for example, if this one is higher than this, is up to this point, suppose this one is here, like this, is taller than this, then this one is also a mode. Hmm? In this example, the mode is only 110. And if this one is tall enough up to this point, then this one is another mode. Uh, so the mode is the major peaks. A distribution is called symmetric if the right and the left sides of the histogram are approximately mirror images of each other. That means uh, the center is here. If we mirror this part, the left hand side to the right hand side, if they approximately um, overlap, uh, then we call this uh, is a symmetric distribution. In this example, uh, it's, it's difficult to see this is symmetric or not, but uh, I would like to see it's not, because obviously this side is, uh, is larger than this side. Right? Um, but you may say this is approximately uh, symmetric. Right? That's really depend. Uh, If a distribution is not symmetric, it may skew to the right or may skew to the left. Uh, if the right side, right hand side is uh, is longer, then it's called a right skew. Uh, if the left hand side is longer, it's much longer usually. Then it's called left uh, skew. For example, here, if the center is 110. Uh, as we said, we may see this is symmetric. Uh, if you don't uh, agree, this is said this is uh, skewed also. So we can see one, two, three here, one, two, three, four. So right hand side we have a four, one, two, three, four. Left hand side we have three. So if either you see this is symmetric or you see this is skewed to the to the right. And for this set of data, the center will be like uh, right, so. Suppose this is the center, then this one is skewed to the, if we look at this one, we turn this one, right? so this is the left, this is the right. Then if the, we consider this one as the center, then this one is skewed to the, to the left. Right? And uh, in this here, if this one is the distribution, right? if the center is around here or here somewhere, uh, the center is here. Then if we turn uh, to the right clockwise, then this side is much longer than this side, so this one will be skewed to the, to the right. Yeah. The next type of plot is called time plot. The time plot is uh, as easy to understand. It's just the plot each observation against the time. Uh, usually this is used to reveal the trend or other ch uh, changes over time. Right? Uh, despite uh, smaller irregularities, uh, the time uh, usually is in horizontal scale. Right? If for time plot, usually we draw horizontal as the time and the vertical as the data. In this example here, um, the horizontal uh, represents uh, the month, the time, right? February, March, April, May. And see, this looks like uh, the temperature, right? Okay, the temperature. Okay, so the uh, 
in the February and the March, the temperature is around like uh, so 10 something, 20 something, 30 something, okay, it can be as high as 50 something. So each dot, each circle here represents um, one observation. And in April and May, uh, the temperature are represented by this, and in June and July, and all this. Uh, if we take the average, uh, the average is here, this average is around here, here. So we can draw a, a line. And this is called a time plot. So we can see the trend, uh, the overall trend of the temperature the increases from February all the way up to August. And at the August, the temperature takes the highest, then the temperature keep uh, decreasing until um, January. Okay. So those are, this is a time plot. Another example of a time plot is this one, stock market, uh, that is, um, a very typical. Uh, this is a five-year uh, Dow Jones Industrial uh, Index, and uh, we can see uh, the the index uh, varies uh, uh, up and down. But the trend uh, is represented by this red line, and we can conclude that the trend uh, goes up. Uh, and in this example here, we use the uh, moving average of 50, so that means this average is, uh, uh, this point is the average of uh, 50, like maybe 50 some, some values. Yeah? Uh, so anyway, time plot is, uh, has been used for uh, yeah, a lot of uh, applications. Okay, this is the part one of the of this chapter. Represent uh, represent the data uh, with the uh, with plot.